when it comes to UK hard men, we've all heard the stories about the gangsters from the East End of London. But if you want to find the real tough guys, you'll need to head up to the northeast of England. Welcome back to Crime Chronicles. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at some of Northeast England's most legendary and infamous old school hard men. Some of these men died young and in violent circumstances. Can the deaths be attributed to organized crime? Stay tuned to find out. Lee Duffy and Viv Graham were both feared and respected in the underground community. In their time, they were two of the most dangerous men in the northeast of England, who eventually crossed paths in a bitter and now legendary feud. Lee Duffy was born in Southbank, Middlesbrough, on June the 11th, 1965. Lee's life didn't get off to a great start. He had a troubled upbringing and he was bullied and abused as a kid. Although he was the victim of bullying from a young age, Lee remained fearless and swore that one day he'd get his revenge. As time went on, Lee grew and developed an impressive physique. In his prime, he was six foot four and over 230 pounds of muscle. That's 193 centimeters and 110 kilograms for you metric folk. This physique, combined with growing up on the streets of Middlesbrough and an aggressive mentality, would turn Lee into a ruthless street fighter. Lee slowly carved a reputation for himself. And stories would soon spread of this ruthless young kid going into the town pubs, clubs and bars and single-handedly knocking out bouncers and door staff. Lee seemingly had no fear and was known to challenge anyone to a fight. His reputation would get bigger in Middlesbrough and the surrounding areas. Lee was well known to have a big knockout punch, combined with devastating power, and he often overwhelmed his opponents in a matter of seconds. It's been reported that Lee was an amateur boxer, but in reality, Lee had hardly any real boxing experience. It seems that Lee was just born to fight. But no matter how much speed, accuracy, and power he had, on a few occasions, Lee would meet his match. It's well known that he had numerous attempts made on his life. He was shot at on a few occasions, and even had petrol poured over him in an attempt to make him a human torch. Lee also had a few fights he didn't win, such as the time he fought another Northeast hard man, Brian Cockerell. At the time, Brian Cockerell was a monster of a man, and one of the strongest men in the country. Lee and Brian had a famous altercation in the street. Lee allegedly approached Brian and then punched him in the side of the face, catching Brian off guard. Brian responded by grabbing hold of Lee and using his brute strength to overpower and overwhelm him. Lee didn't give up and the fight carried on, continuing up the street. The fight would ultimately end in a draw and the two would eventually become good friends. They decided to team up and use their muscle to start taxing local drug dealers and other criminals in the Middlesbrough and surrounding areas. This led to the pair becoming known as the Tax Men. One thing that's been said about Lee was that he always wanted to be the hardest man around and the toughest guy in the room. He was never scared and wanted to fight and challenge anyone, which led to his biggest obsession. Lee was determined to fight one of Northeast England's most well-known hard men, Viv Graham. Viv grew up in Highfield, near Rowlands Gill, a small village on the outskirts of Gateshead. Viv was a good amateur boxer and had several fights under his belt. He was huge and powerfully built, and although not really a criminal, Viv would end up involved in that life. Viv made his start as a doorman, working with well-known local faces Billy Robinson and Paddy Leonard. It didn't take long for Viv to start operating a small army of doormen who protected various licensed premises in the central Newcastle and Walls End areas. Viv was a smart and accomplished businessman 
who was earning a lot of money at the time with interests in a lot of different things. As Viv's business grew, he started to make large amounts of money, which he used to fund a serious gambling addiction. Viv had developed a fearsome reputation, and he fought and bet many of the local thugs and criminals from the Northeast, bringing him to the attention of the criminal underworld. The Newcastle underworld at the time was run by a few different crime families and various organizations, and these groups would use Viv as their muscle. In one notorious incident at Hobo's nightclub in 1989, Viv can be seen on CCTV brutally attacking fellow bouncer Stuart Watson. Viv would cut ties with the crime families and the criminal organizations after this incident at Hobo's. Not long after this, he started receiving death threats and attempts on his life. The success of Viv's business and control of many of the local doors made a lot of other criminals very jealous, angry and bitter. Eventually, his success upset the wrong people. The local firms and crime families were not pleased with this as the loss of door control meant they were losing money. Controlling the doors has historically been a popular way for organized crime groups to deal drugs and launder money. The feud with Lee Duffy would begin well after Viv was an established businessman with his fighting days behind him. The rivalry and feud was seemingly something Lee was determined to create, and it didn't interest Viv. Lee was the aggressor, and there were multiple stories of Lee turning up at the clubs Viv controlled and terrorizing Viv's bouncers. There are stories of Lee taking on multiple bouncers, knocking out three or four at a time. After these fights, Lee would instruct the staff to tell Viv that the duffer had been there. There is no doubt that Lee went looking for Viv on a few occasions, and because of these incidents, others thought Viv was losing face and people assumed that he was scared. The reality was, most likely, that Viv was a powerful man who could more than look after himself, but he had become more focused on business rather than maintaining a reputation as a hard man. The supposed feud was being instigated by other people during a period that Lee spent a lot of time in Newcastle. Lee had a lot of close friends there, and most of Lee's associates in one way or another had a major problem with Viv. Ultimately, they wanted Viv out of the way, so they used Lee as their weapon because they did not want to fight Viv themselves. Also, Lee was younger and immature. He lived for the moment and also wanted Viv's reputation. Viv had a big reputation at that time, but he also had more to lose. He had multiple successful businesses and had no need to prove himself to young chances on the way up. The two men never did have that famous fight and over time, their rivalry slowly fizzled out. Lee and Viv would both die violent deaths not too long after this. Lee Duffy would pass away first. On the night of his death, he had turned up at a party at a local Caribbean center. Apparently, the party was ruined as soon as Lee turned up. Such was his violent and unpredictable reputation. Lee got into an argument with a man called David Allison, perhaps one of the few people at that time who wasn't scared of Lee. Lee and Allison had a long history. They'd had a few run-ins and a few fights before, with Lee often coming out on top. On this evening, the two men went into the car park and had a small scrap. Lee was said to be getting the upper hand until someone handed Allison a knife. He used the knife, stabbing Lee one time under the left arm. Lee was rushed to the hospital, but despite the best efforts of the medical professionals, he passed away at 3.55 a.m. on August the 25th, 1991. Lee Duffy had lived a chaotic and violent life and died aged only 26.
Viv would live for about another year and a half after Lee's death. Much like Lee, he would also meet a violent end. Viv was gunned down, shot multiple times outside the Queen's Head pub on Border Road, Wall's End, on New Year's Eve 1993. Viv's car window was mysteriously smashed at the time, probably in an attempt to draw his attention so he could be caught off guard prior to being shot. Viv was a fighter though, and would drag himself around 30 yards before collapsing. He would die later that night in hospital, aged just 34. Viv's murder is still unsolved, and to this day, his killer, or killers, have never been identified. As we've seen, by being so successful, Viv had made enemies in the criminal underworld. Maybe some of these enemies decided to take Viv out and move in on his operation. Sadly, even after 30 years, we still don't have any concrete proof that this was the case. Thank you for joining us today on Crime Chronicles. If you like the story, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more of the craziest crime stories.